Good morning, House of Purpose. It's so wonderful to see you guys again today. Yesterday was fantastic. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you guys today. We really missed you guys. It was great to see you yesterday. Um, I'm going to start us out with some scripture and a prayer, and then we're going to worship the Lord Jesus Christ together. We're going to thank him for all the wonderful blessings in our life. Amen. This is out of Hebrews 12 and 28, and it says, Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and yeah. please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. And we got to make adjustments because there's, well, you got to, I'm the only one talking, so we got to turn that. Yeah, so we got to. All right. Praise God. Praise God. We, we can make adjustments before we start singing, so there's no squealing in there. So I'm going to pray while Matt makes some minor adjustments on there, or I guess he already did. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, we welcome you here, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Father, we welcome you here. We just love you so much. We thank you for the opportunity to fellowship together and to praise and worship you and just thank you and just to show our love and appreciation for you. We adore you, Lord, your presence, your anointing. We thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us through our faithful pastors and, and giving us direction and ordering our footsteps. Lord, we just uh, worship you right now. We turn the service over to you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. Like me Saved a 
understand even even in the things that as the seasons change lord help us to embrace your will and just wholeheartedly be prayerfully forging forward with this new season that we're in lord jesus Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Thank you, Lord, that you are sovereignly in control. 
Jesus here today. It's good to see you all. Amen. You know, we had a blessed day yesterday, an incredible day. And uh, I want to take a minute to mention to you when you're in the back and you're kind of milling around away from your seats and things like that, please do follow the protocol because sometimes people will come into the building, uh, you know, watching to see if, you know, we're following, uh, you know, procedures with the mask, making sure that, you know, our, our team back there has gloves on, stuff like that. We want to give the, the appearance, Lord, we operate as children of, of light. We're in a different kingdom than the kingdom of this world, but still... Like uh, Reverend Kelly said yesterday, follow me as I follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we've got to be, so, you know, uh, aware of other people's uh, situations and health issues and things like that. So let's honor them in what we do. So COVID uh, protocols. Men and women of purpose is Tuesday. Oh, we want to talk about the miracle lunch. Nancy's got photos. Awesome. There's Kim and Matt doing the worship. That's an awesome time. And Gabriella, she brought a powerful word too, didn't she? She's incredible. She's a great woman of God. Boy, and, and the Reverend Kelly brought it to just about everyone in the room, didn't he? <laughs> he's a great guy. He's an incredible guy. Roy Hanschke, and you know, doing the he's great as an MC, isn't he? Yes. He's incredible. And uh, Roger up there giving his testimony. Dorothea gave her testimony. Hey Dorothea, would you share? And come up here really quickly and share with us. And I want you here. I'll actually bring the microphone to you. Well, come up here because we'll have some feedback. What do you want me to share about? I want you to share about your journal and how you first came by House of Purpose. Would you do that for us? Yes, sir. Yes. I don't know the proper thing for you. You can to go ahead and do it up here. You can go ahead. Okay. Um. The first day I attended House of Purpose was July 22nd, 2018. I was experiencing things in my life and I was going through some stuff. And I was walking down Colfax and I heard Pastor David, I didn't know him then, and the speaker. And I saw the open and welcome signs. And I got chills down my spine when I heard him preaching. So I came in the door. And it's 2020 and here I am. Amen. Since I've attended this church, my entire life has done a 360. And I give all grace to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Amen. 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 Praise God. And Dorothea has been journaling ever since. She has a journal. The first day, she showed me the first day she attended and how much that meant to her and what she wrote down. So that was a blessing. You know, I got a call last night from a gentleman that said, you know, Pastor David, what you said to me one day, it's the Lord, you know, it ain't me. It's God speaking through uh, me when these things occur. And he says, you know, it changed my life. It was a phone call. I don't even know who it is yet. I got to call him back. But, you know, God gets mileage out of a lot of things in our lives, don't he? Yeah. Amen. And, uh, man, it was, it, it's incredible what God is doing. It's a life full of miracles. Amen. So we have men and women's Bible study, 5 to 7 p.m. Kim Rocks will be leading our women. And we'll be studying what we're talking about this morning. And who's leading the men? And Matt is leading the men. Yep. So we'll start with dinner at, you know, 5 o'clock and then till about 5.30. And we'll be done about 6.30 right in there. So it'll be a good time to, to remember, to meditate and, uh, you know, begin to speak the word out of our lives and what you're going to hear this morning. So uh, we want to retain the knowledge of God in our hearts and in our minds. And then we want to carry him out in our lives. So that's what we'll be studying the message from this week on Tuesday night. Nancy and I are going to attend. And this will be the last Tuesday for this month. We're going to take two weeks off in November for the holidays because some people like to, you know, extend their travel times and things like that and it gives our team a break and then in december we come on for two weeks again and then we're going to take two weeks off for the holidays beautiful thing a beautiful thing i just heard out there was a motorcycle <laughs> music to my ears but uh yeah and then we've got uh warming center at 7 30 here uh through 9 30 a.m and uh 
feel free to come in, and uh, that will be on Wednesday. And I want to share with you about Zoom prayer. You can join us for prayer on your bulletin, I think is the number to join, right? Or you can actually um, get on Zoom, and we can see your happy, smiling face. I really like that. One you time. want me to text you the link. Yeah. So let, let me know and give me your phone number. Yeah, or your I'll email address, too. And one time, uh, Kim was on the phone call, and all we could see was her light up on the ceiling. It's like, nice lamp, Kim, but let's see your face. <laughs> Amen? So Nancy's going to lead us in our offering. All right. Well, it is great to see all of you here today. Amen. That's wonderful, and it's a, a pretty nice day out there, I think. So, yeah, and we rejoice. <laughs> You're right. It's more seasonal, which is wonderful. And this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Right? So, well, while you're preparing your offerings and your prayer requests, I want to mention that. If you have a prayer request, fill out the blue or the yellow card at your seat, and you can slip that in the offering when it comes by. And so while you're preparing those, I wanted to talk to you about taking action and stopping procrastination. You know, this is something that I've been talking about for a few weeks now. And we talked first about Daniel 11.32, about the people who know their God will display strength and take action. And so that the real key to overcoming procrastination is your relationship with God, right? Because as you wait on the Lord, you will gain strength, and he will help you with that. Um, but I wanted to also give you some... Just some practical things. You know, so last week we talked about focus on what is most important and prioritize getting that done. So don't spread yourself too thin. You know, I've done that thing before where we, uh, you know, where like it's a New Year's resolution and you decide you want to learn French and you want to run a marathon this year. You know, you decide all these different things. And because you have so many things that you want to do, you end up not getting any of it done, right? Like a I don't know how many other people have been like that before. <laughs> Stephen definitely mentioned that he's been that way. You know, so um, so that's one important thing. Then today I want to talk to you about the power of chunking. And this is kind of a la Tony Robbins, but there's other people who um, you know teach this as far as time management as well. And chunking is the grouping together of information or tasks into ideally sized pieces so they can be used effectively to produce the outcome you want without stress or shutdown. So let me first just give you just a, a few of the premises that this uh, tool addresses for you. So first of all, stress comes from the feeling that we have an impossible number of things to do and that we have no time to do them. And so chunking is going to help you with that, to not feel like you have so much stuff. And then uh, number two is that multitasking really doesn't work. Right, you may even think that you are. You know, have you ever kind of thought that? I'm being super efficient. I'm like whirling from thing to thing. Never actually quite finishing anything though. I definitely have had that happen to me before where I'm just switching between things and nothing comes off my to-do list because <laughs> I just keep switching between things. And you actually have a startup and a focus cost when you do that. Every time you switch to something new, it takes you a little bit to get back in the swing of it. And so that's actually not an efficient way to manage your time. Um, number three is that viewing your tasks from a goal or outcome standpoint will be more inspirational to getting them done. Also, it will help you to organize them. We're going to talk about how to do that. You know, but it, don't just look at it as, oh, I've got to do laundry and I've got to go grocery shopping. Look at what is the outcome of that? Well, the outcome one of grocery shopping could be that you're going to be healthy because you have something good to eat, and you're not just eating junk because that's what was left at your house. Um, you know, another outcome of doing laundry could be that you're taking care of your family. You know, so kind of look at those kinds of things, and it will help you to be motivated to do the things that you need to do. And then the fourth one is that the optimum... Oh, I forgot a quote here. <laughs> so this is from Team Tony. It says, when you're driven by your ultimate purpose, instead of the need to check items off a to-do list, you'll feel more productive and less stressed. And when you feel less stressed, you find more reasons to act instead of making excuses. Amen. So that's part of looking at the goal of what you want to accomplish, not just looking at the task itself. 
Let's see, and then the fourth one is that the optimum amount of time for people to focus is scientifically proven to be 25 minutes. So uh, we're going to talk about how that fits into this. So how to implement chunking? Well, at the start of your week, take some time to plan. You know, and you may be thinking, like sometimes I feel this way, like I've got so much stuff and all these people, especially at work, are emailing me and they're asking me questions and they're calling me. I've just got to jump in and do all these things. But he, Tony Robbins points out that you need to spend some time planning your week. And it will be well worth it. You will find that it will help you uh, to get things done and to be more efficient with that. And he has a quote that he says, where focus goes, energy flows. So when you plan, that'll even start helping, helping you to start having that energy to get the things done that you need to. And so he says, write everything down. That's a, a great first start. He said kind of even just, um, he called it a mind dump even. You know, just start putting everything that you think you need to do down. Then, with each one of those, write down the ultimate goal or outcome that you want from that task. And start having kind of some bigger pictures of that, though. You know, because it, it's not going to help you if you have like 25 things to do and then you have 25 different outcomes. So what he's trying to teach you to do is to kind of have a little bit bigger picture of it. And some of the groupings that you might look at is relationship with God. Um, some things might be relationships with people. Some of it might be work related. Some things might be health related. You know, and start grouping everything. And hopefully you can get everything down into just um, five chunks. So you want to chunk or group everything by the outcomes. And five chunks will be kind of manageable. So that's part of that reducing the stress of having so many things to do. Because um, now you've grouped it into just five chunks. And what do you have? Five days that are in the weekday, right? You know, so assign yourself a chunk each day. And during the day, focus on getting that chunk done until you finish it. And don't worry about the other chunks. You know, sometimes, you know, you can find them kind of trying to sneak in there and tell you, you, you need to pay attention to me. You know, but the structure will help you. Pastor David's actually really good at this. When, when we first started dating, I started noticing that he's really good at just sort of like, right now, this is what we're doing. And you don't think about anything else that you need to do. Just stay on this. Whereas I was someone who was kind of always like, yeah, but that might need attention. No, we're doing this right now. So, <laughs> and it has really helped me. I feel like it's really um, given, reduced a lot of my stress. And it's given me time and permission to rest sometimes, too. You know, because I was kind of somebody who always was doing, you know, all the time. You know, and he was like, no, we, we worked really hard today when we focused. And now it's time to rest. You know, so it'll help you have that instead of always feeling like these little things trying to, ah, you got to get this done. So, so you'll assign a day to do that. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool about assigning a day is, one, that you have only just that day to get that group of things done, right? Because work always expands to fill the allotted time is one rule uh, that we have. And so... You know, if you don't do this, you might find yourself like having that one chunk. Oh, now it's starting to take three days, four days, because you're not focusing on it. You know, so it, so it has to be done just in that day. And then within that day, work in 25 minute chunks, which is the uh, Pomodoro technique, actually. So you have 25 minutes on, and then you have a five minute break. Then you go back to focusing for 25 minutes. And doesn't 25 minutes seem like doable? Like that you could focus on just one thing for 25 minutes, put everything else aside, you know, like turn off the notifications on your phone, you know, don't pay attention to that, maybe turn the ringer off on your phone so you, people can't reach you during that time. Um, then you get a five minute break and you can do whatever you want in the five minute break. Maybe the five minute breaks when you respond to that text. But set a timer and make sure after five minutes are up, you get back on track and do another one of your techniques or, you know, another one of your tasks, you know, or maybe you're continuing on the same task. And so there's like a little, the little clock that they have of the Pomodoro technique that you can um, have 25 minutes on and five minute breaks and organize your day in that way. And all of these things, they're kind of practical and I can't necessarily say that 
You'll find exactly this in the Bible. But I do believe that God is a God of order, and he has taught us some things about ordering our time. And so I wanted to look at Psalm 90, verse 12. And this says, So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. And I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say this could also be number our minutes. Because days are made up of minutes. You know, so I think that this really is something that's in the Bible. So we need to number our time, number our minutes, and make sure that we're making the most use of our time. You know, because we've talked before about how are we ever going to do the things God's calling us to do if we can't even do the things that are just normal life things, right? You know, so this is like a really big thing to overcome. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely one of the chief procrastinators. I've been. <laughs> I have, a, I have a lot of trouble with that, especially at work. I tend to, tend to do other people's jobs because they keep asking me and not do my own. So, uh, so I'm going to be trying to work on this too, to do this. And so since we always have an action thing, and this is on your bulletin, um, your action for next week is to spend 25 minutes, just 25 minutes, on Monday planning your activities for the week. You know, and think about the reasons that you're doing everything. Kind of look at the big picture goal of what you want to accomplish. And then organize those based on the outcomes into the 25 minute chunks and then put aside everything else during that 25 minute time and start to practice this. You know, and you might initially only be able to do this a little bit. You know, I, I don't know what everybody's life is like. You know, even mine, I have a lot of interruptions and there are certain people that I have to address the interruptions. I can't, <laughs> I can't go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm focused. <laughs> To my boss, yeah. <laughs> I'll get back to you later. You know, so um, so kind of always take all of this, use wisdom with it. Um, but I hope that this is blessing you, uh, having some of these tips on avoiding procrastination, getting things done. And we're going to receive our offering here in just a moment. And here at House Purpose, we say that we give so that others may live by faith in Jesus Christ. And so we have a few different ways for you to give. Uh, you can text PURPOSE to 45777. You can go to houseofpurposechurch.org and go to online giving. Um, those of you who are watching on, online, you can mail it to House of Purpose. And the address is on the screen there. And here in the service, we will receive the offering and your prayer requests. And so I'm going to pray over those. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that you do for us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us, God. To get better at using our time wisely, Lord. You know, your, your word is very clear. The time is short. None of us know how long we have. And Lord, there's things you've called each of us to do, and we want to do those things. And so I pray, Lord, that you would help us with this, Lord, to get more organized and to be able to do the things you call us to do. Lord, I pray also that you would bless each one who's giving. I pray, Lord, that you'd meet their needs. Your word says that you will give seed to the sower so they can be generous on every occasion, Lord. So we thank you you provide for them, Lord. And I pray that you'd use these offerings to draw other people into your kingdom, Lord, and to cause people to come to know you and have their lives transformed by you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, um, something I wanted to remind you guys about, we do the online service. And even though we're here, we're getting to hear the message. Don't forget to share that to your, your family and friends and your communities out there on social media. I've got some feedback, Matt. Um, because maybe they didn't get to go to church this week. A lot of churches are shutting back down again. So, um, you, you know, get the word out there. This is, these are great messages, and it might be the only word that anybody hears in a given week. So if you think about that, share those. Just real quick, um, be responsible with others. That's why we do wear the mask when you're standing up. Um, the, the U.S. District Court ruled on behalf of the churches last Thursday saying they cannot tell us what to do. They can't tell us how many people to have in the room or any of that. But we're going to do things out of respect and protect each other, okay? So I encourage you to look out for each other and make sure that, hey, you keep your distance anyway. I know some people in the faith that have got it, but God has delivered them out of it. So let's do what's right in, in God's sight. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible says to, re to respect our authorities, and that's what, that's what we're going to do as best as we can. We're not perfect, but we can, we can try. <laughs> the 
God bless you guys. Yeah. We love you, and you know for sure God loves you more. Uh, <laughs> he is with you. So go out there in the community and love others. Love others. Know that God has got you in the palm of his hands. He's going to take care of you, and you can go out there and, and help him heal the brokenhearted. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And God led me to talk about it a little bit more. Because there's a lot that we can learn about this. And about living by faith. So in 1 Kings chapter 18, we'll be in that book of 1 Kings primarily today. And we're going to have a good time in the Word of God. How many of you know you have a great time in the Word of God? Yeah. Amen. So Elijah, he says to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull for yourself and prepare it. First, since there are many of you, Elijah was outnumbered. Everyone was against him. But it doesn't matter. As long as you're on God's side and saying what he wants you to say, if he's for you, who can be against you? I mean, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. Amen. And he says, and, and, and call on the name of your God with the small g, but put no fire under it. So they took a bull that was given to them to prepare it and called on the name of Baal, which was their God of the time, from morning until noon. He says, I'm going to give you a lot of time to do this, Okay saying, Baal, hear and answer us. But if there's no voice and no one answered, and they began to start to take matters into their own hands and leaped and danced and about the altar he had made, and at noon Elijah began to mock them. They're them and their God with a small g. Cry out. He says, cry out with a loud voice. For... You know, if he's God, he's either occupied, he's too busy for you. Yeah, you got a too busy small g God that you're looking to, okay? Your focus is all wrong. Totally wrong. So either he's occupied, your small g God, or he's out for the moment. <laughs> Maybe he stepped out, he went to the store, I don't know. Or he's on a journey. Maybe he went to go see some other small G gods. Uh, who knows? Right? Perhaps he's sleeping. And he needs to be awakened. How many of you know we got a 24-7 God? Amen. 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 I found this out of Zondervan's illustrated Bible backgrounds commentary of the Old Testament. I, I thought it was really fascinating saying that perhaps he's in deep thought, busy or traveling. Maybe he's sleeping and, and must be awakened. His alarm clock didn't go off. The gods of Canaan, Mesopotamia, Greece, were understood to possess human characteristics. Think about the gods of Greece. You know, Zeus, they had a different god for every little characteristic. Okay? Including vices and some bodily functions. Say yuck about three times. So, Elijah, therefore, is taunting the prophets with their own possible explanations. He says, hey, you guys, they think maybe he's asleep. Maybe you need to slide an alarm clock up under him. Maybe he'll come to your aid at some point. But he never, they, he never does, this, this God of Baal. And the passage, the Baal cycle, describes the challenge in finding that Baal is not in his house. How many of you know God is always in the house? Yes. Amen. He's always readily available. He is the God that hears us. Can we give him a shout? A little louder than that. Amen. So the Sumerian gods also seem 
in mythology are similar to this. You know, look at look at our times. You know, Buddha, you got to go find him and rub his belly. Maybe you stuck him under some dust. I don't know. <laughs> but you got a serious problem if you got to wake up your God. Amen. <laughs> but when we know, when we know that we have a God that hears us at any time. Point number one, we understand that he's available to hear us at any time. Amen? Amen? Your friends ain't available to hear you at any time. Amen? There's a certain point your pastor shuts off his phone at night. I'm not going to answer the phone, okay? It's not going to be on. And that's maybe a little bit wise to do because I'm finite, but he's God. He's always available. Amen? Amen. Amen. So there's a name. For this attribute of God is many characteristics. Jehovah Shammah, for the Lord is there. He never leaves. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you, Jesus said. Thank you. Jehovah actually means Yahweh, which means Lord and Master. It is, it is promised and a proper name of God, but Chama is an adverb also that means there. You can count on him being there. And Jehovah Shama means the Lord is there. God revealed his name at a time when Israel was in rebellion. They were in captivity. When they were yet where it seemed like they were distant from him. They were in bondage. He came and made his name known. They didn't have to even call on him sometimes. The Bible tells us if we at least rope around for him, we will find him. He's there the whole time. Amen? Amen. He's there the whole time. My sister got up and gave her testimony. She realized that God was there the whole time. She walked by and heard the speakers, but she also said yesterday that, hey, I was living in my car, and God didn't want me living in my car, so he caused my car to stop, right, sister? Right. Yeah. Amen. And then he brought her by to hear, the, hear him speak. Amen. Amen. And it said, shivers down your spine. Amen. Yeah. Mm. He's a God that's really there. He's a God that's there in power. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's there for us. Amen. Yeah. So regardless of what we are going through or you're going through here today or what you're headed into know that God is already there thank God for that isn't that amazing yes. he was there back then he's there yesterday he's there today he's going to be there tomorrow you'll never have to wake him up he's always a constant so Point number two, no matter the circumstances you find yourself in, whether past, whether present, whether it's in the future, God is there, has been there, and will be there for you. As soon as you call on him, he will reveal himself because he is right there. He's right there, ready to respond in whatever situation that you find yourself in. Isn't that beautiful? In Ezekiel, this is a fascinating, you may never have thought of it this way, but in Ezekiel 48, 35, the distance around the city shall be 18,000 times 400 and, or 4,500 cubits. And the name of the city from that day after shall be the Lord is there. He always will be there. The name Jehovah Shama, Yahweh, to be given and restore the beautiful Jerusalem of the Messiah's heavenly reign that's coming in the future. Behold, I see the new heavens and a new earth. And the city of our God came down to reside within us. 
Hallelujah. He's going to be a very tangible, present God in the future. When they talk about this city in Revelation, is re re reverenced in Revelation as you take this passage from Ezekiel into the future. And behold, I've seen this glorious city, and God was with them. This is the size and circumference. This city is, is the size and distance of the length of the United States is high and wide. Like a giant Rubik's Cube coming down from heaven. I'm announcing I am with you. Okay? Are you getting this? So then Elijah says to the people, he says, come near to me. Come near to me. Why? Because he was near to God. He was a man that was interested in the things of God. The things of God. He says, come near to me. Their God ain't answered. They, he needs an alarm clock, all right? So the people approached him and and he prepared and rebuilt an old altar. The altar of the Lord that had been torn down. Perhaps in your life, there used to be an altar to God. Today is a day to rebuild that altar. Today is the day to rebuild that altar of worship. Because God is very near to you. And you want to experience his presence. You want to know that he's always there. And you want to have a sense of that in a constant way in your life. So he rebuilds this altar that was torn down by Jezebel, the wicked witch of the time. It led Israel astray. Ahab was a weak king. His, his uh, wife was running the show. He wanted to do away with every, she wanted to do away with every semblance of God. Sometimes in our culture they want to do it, but they can't do it because he's always there. It's like a fool's errand. Then Elijah took 12 stones in accordance with the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Remember when God brought Israel into the promised land and they crossed the river Jordan. They were to set up a monument of, of stones. Twelve stones. And the reason why is he wanted to say, hey, do you remember this is a God that gave you your, his holy word? And he's true to his word. And I want you to realize not only is he true to his word, but he, he is that same God that is there all the time. So Elijah took 12 stones in accordance with the number of the tribes of Israel, the sons of Jacob, whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. It's Prince of God, Israel. We need to build an altar, folks, with, of our lives. An altar of our lives. An altar of worship with our lives to the Lord. And know, know that he hears us. I'm here to tell you that he, know, he hears us. Amen? Amen? He hears us. The people in slavery in Egypt had forgot the name of the Lord. They forgot that he was there for them in the past. And sometimes we forget that he was there for us. And we got to rehearse that so that we might come back to him. So he brought them out of Egypt into his grace. And transformed them into a nation in Mount Sinai with his word. He gave them his holy word and he brought them into a promised land. And they were blessed. When they had forgotten him, now suddenly 
Other gods crept in. God's people, when they look, they look back on the miracles. We had a miracle lunch yesterday. And you can have a miracle life. As you remember that God is here always. There was miracles as they left Egypt. But you got to leave behind bondage, folks. You got to step out with God and you got to cross over the baptisms of life. They crossed over the Red Sea and he parted it. They had to walk up to the shore. Even had to tell Moses, quit crying out to me and stretch out the rod, okay? That I've given you. I've given you my word. I'm going to deliver you. I ain't going to leave you. I ain't going to forsake you. So they, he stepped forward and they, they stepped out. And the sea parted. Similarly, at, as they entered into the promised land and they went into the Jordan, they had to step out into the water. And remember that God is the God that separates fact from fiction, circumstance from reality. He is reality. Amen? Amen. So, know that he hears us. Build an altar to him. As we continue in verse 32 through 35, so with the stones, Elijah built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar that holds two measures of seed, which is about 22 quarts of seed. Israel's a little hungry. They're starving at the time. He pours seed into the trench. He's like, what is he doing? He's throwing away our, our bread. You know, what is he doing? Sometimes you've got to give up some things, folks, in your life. Sometimes you got to give up what you think you need to hang on to and give it to God. Amen. Amen? Amen. And realize that He's there. Yeah. And realizing that He can provide for you. He's also Je Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Amen? Amen? Then He laid out the wood and He cut the ox into pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, fill four pitchers full of water and pour it on a burnt offering in the wood. He's telling Israel to do this. Okay? So they, they go in and pour four pitchers on, on the wood. And he says, do it a second time. And they're thinking, there ain't no way a fire could start. This is the way to put out a fire. Amen? Amen. In the natural. But you do what God tells you to do. Amen? Amen? Even if it doesn't seem logical in the natural mind. The just shall live by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so they did it a second time. Faith. And he said, do it a third time. So now this is soaking wet. The ox is dripping. You know, everything's going on. The barbecue, they think, is a mess here. And the water flowed around the altar and also filled the trench with water. When we know. Point number four, when we know God hears us, we speak to him. When he responds, we, we must step out in faith. When God says to do something, step out in faith and watch what he does in your life. In order to witness the miraculous in your life, you've got to stop looking at the circumstances around you. You gotta be start to stop thinking the water is too deep. You gotta start thinking there's no fire left. Maybe things didn't turn out the way you thought this week. Doesn't matter, God is there. Do you want the miraculous in your life? Build an altar to God and then step out in faith. Because it's not your altar. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's doing, and it isn't it wonderful is what it says in part of Scripture. John Maxwell in a leader, his leadership Bible, he said, Elijah grew tired of the people's spiritual rebellion and 
angry with the false prophets of Baal. He confronted both forces on the top of Mount Carmel and defeated the devil's henchmen. Jesus defeated the devil at Calvary on top of a hill outside Jerusalem. He made public display that the devil's works are of no good. He's a finite being. He cannot be in every place that God is. So don't ever think that he's as powerful as the Lord because he can't possibly be. So no matter what is happening in your life, now think about this. He confronts all these forces that are against him with just the word of the Lord. They outnumbered him 850 to 1. Think of those odds. No one had seen any courage like this since David and Goliath. And one man stands before Israel and says, Behold, the Lord is there. Elijah met the enemy with passion. Elijah met the enemy with purpose. Elijah met the enemy head on with the wind of the Lord at his back and the spirit of the Lord and on fire with God. And I want to share with you, whether you're walking down the street or wherever you are, only God gives purpose and passion the way that can ignite a man like Elijah where you're 850 to 1 and you don't care. Because the Lord is there. So, his eyes drank in the greatness of God. Not the numbers of his enemy. He drank in the greatness of God in this time. This heavenly vision fueled the fire and the passion inside of this man. And it can with you. His resolution outweighed his, re his uh, reservations. He was no longer thinking about reservations. Although they greatly outnumbered Elijah's resolve that Baal had to be confronted at any cost, sometimes what's wrong is wrong. And it needs to be confronted, and sometimes there's a cost, and sometimes you don't want to do it, but you've got to trust God. His desires outweighed his desperation. Although it meant risk, Elijah wanted to honor Yahweh, the Lord. More than anything else. And you've got to have that desire. More than anything else, you want to honor God. More than anything else, you want to do what is right. Amen. You need to have a life without reservations because God is there. You need to have a life that outweighs any desperation you used to feel. His compassion outweighed his complaints. He cared deeply for the children of God and the nation of Israel. Though Elijah hated the people's attitude, he wanted them to follow Yahweh. Yahweh, the Lord, so that they would find out that all these things are true. The Rev said something yesterday, Reverend Leon Kelly, that I thought was really striking. He says, I gotta love you, doesn't mean I gotta like you. <laughs> Sometimes people are not doing quite what you think they should be doing. And as pastors, we get that. And we love all of you. And I get different phone calls from now and then, and I say, well, you know, this is, you know, the sheep has wandered out in this direction. I've got to go get them and let them know God is there. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Yep. Yes. He's got to realize that the miracles still exist. The problem with sometimes miracles is we see God work 
like Israel worked in the past. God worked in Israel. And we, we see that, and all of a sudden we see the miracles take place, and we think, oh, everything's good. Now I go off on my own. Now get this, Elijah is calling the nation of Israel together. God wants the church to witness his miracles today because he is here. He has not left. And so he says, don't forsake your gathering together. Even as the days draw near, the greatest works of God are yet to come. And I want to see him, don't you? Because he is there. So we got to let go of our reservations, folks. We got to say, get rid of all the buts. No but, maybe if God shows, no, He's here. We got to forget about the desperation. Eight hundred and fifty to one. Focus on the Lord. Amen. Then He will ignite the passion, the desire, and the purpose. All over again. Amen. Oh, I'm going to get excited in here. Oh, God. We're going to worship him in this place or else I'm worshiping him all by myself in here. Yes. He is there. He is here. He was there. He's, he, despite myself and all my mistakes, he has always been there. Oh, my Lord, my God. It's time for all of us to become resolute in our own relationship with the Lord and come to understand that He hears you. He's listening. He's so near. You ever thought about that? God hears everything I say. Amen. God hears everything I think. God hears everything that I dream about when I'm asleep at night. God hears it all. God knows um, if I got a rock in, underneath my shoe, even when I don't, when I don't know, when I don't understand. So Elijah prays. Verse 36 and 38. After that time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah, he waits all day long. Now it's evening time. God, the other gods didn't answer nothing. They're on a trip, something. Head trip, who knows. Elijah the prophet approached the altar and he says, Oh Lord, the God that has been there for Abraham, the God that has been there for Isaac, is now here in my presence. Let it be known today that you are God in Israel. Let it be known today that you are God over the house of purpose. Let it be known that you are the Lord of my life and you have always been there and you always will be. And there's no question in my life. So now I step out in faith. Let it be known today that you are the God of Israel, and I am your servant. Whatever you say, I will do. That's what a servant does. Amen. Oh, there ain't. We were in the kingdom of God. Guess what, folks? There ain't no democracy. It's what God says. Amen. Amen. You don't get to vote on it. You just, you just, you just do it. And things go well for you. Amen. I'm your servant, and I have done all the things that you said. And I know that you're going to show up. And God will show up and show off in your life when you step out in faith and do all the things that he tells you to do. No matter what it looks like. No matter what the circumstance, beloved. No matter what. Don't look at the things around you. Don't think about it. Just say yes. Just say yes. And he says, answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may also know that you are God. 
And Leon Kelly said something too that was phenomenal yesterday. He says, I don't care what re re religion you are or whatever. He says, follow me as I follow Christ and you'll come to find out Amen. that he is God in Israel. And even the prophets of Baal came to find out that there was a God in Israel. Yeah, that's right. Goliath came to find out that there was a God in Israel. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they think out there. We ain't people pleasers. Right. We're God. People of God. Amen. There's, no, why, there's nothing you can do to please God. Your obedience prompts miracles. Your, obe your, 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 your obedience prompts prompts the miraculous and the powerful presence of God in your life. The anointing and everything that goes with it. Answer me so that this people will know, oh God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you. Follow me as I follow Jesus. Then the fire of the Lord fell and it consumed, despite the water, despite all the circumstances. The fire of God ate up the wood, the dust, the water in the trench, everything that you face. Our God is a consuming fire. Amen. And he's got a consuming passion for your life and a consuming purpose and a bright future. Now listen to this. Point number six. When we have the zeal for the Lord, the zeal, it's different than going through the motions. The zeal for the things of God. The zeal for the Lord in operation in our lives. Like Elijah, we pray prayers of faith. Because we know God hears us and he responds to us. We don't say if maybe, if might be. Kind of, sort of, if you want to show up. Oh, we don't pray like that. Are you kidding me? If we know God is there, we don't pray like that. We don't say, uh, you know what, uh, maybe, uh, kind of. Um. And you know it can start out like that. When I was young and a Christian, as a Christian, you call out in desperation. Oh, God, if you're there, hear me. Can you imagine God's like it from there? <laughs> wow. Never thought of it that way, but since you think of that way, I might show up and show off on your behalf despite your your prayer. Has he done that in your life? It's like, okay, I'm going to show you I'm there. All right? But he hears us, and he responds to faith. Amen? So Galatians 3, 7 says this. So understand that as a people who live by faith with confidence in the power and goodness of God who are the true sons of Abraham. Jesus said this. He comes to earth. Jesus comes to earth and it says, call him Emmanuel for God is with us. Hebrews 10, 37 through 39 says, For yet a little while, he who is coming will not delay, but my righteous one, the one justified by faith, shall live by faith, respecting man's relationship with God and trusting in him. That's how Jesus lived. But he talks in reference to us. You ever thought about this? If God is present, if he's good in the future, if he's here, he's there. He understands everything. Okay? Time is insignificant. Doesn't exist with God. Therefore, it's right on time. No matter what. And if he draws back, shrinking in fear, my soul does not delight in him. But our way is not of those who shrink back into destruction. Our way is not that of the world, of the people that trust in little G-gods, 
They need an alarm clock to wake them up. But we are of those who believe and rely on God through faith in Jesus Christ the Messiah. We give. Remember our offering? We give so that others may live by faith in Jesus Christ. And by this confident faith, preserve the souls. So let's review. And then we'll pray. And we'll review Tuesday night again. Yep. Right, Kim? Right, Matt? Amen? Amen. So we're going to have a good Tuesday night. Men and women of purpose. Amen? Right. Amen. When we know that we have a God that hears us, we understand that he's available at any time. He hears us any time. No matter the circumstance you find yourself in, whether past, present, future, doesn't matter. God can hear you right now. Doesn't matter what mistakes you made in the past. Doesn't matter. He'll be there for you now. So we need to build our lives into an altar of worship before the Lord God Almighty. Before the God that is always there and always hears us. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? It says in the scripture. The temple, the place, and the area of the presence of God. You even bypassed the altar and stepped right into his presence. The altar is our lives. He hears us. When we know God hears us, we speak to him and he responds. And when he responds and he answers, step out in faith. Step out in faith. Understand that God hears you. Be resolute in your own relationship with the Lord. Come to understand that God hears you. Have a zeal and a fire for God. And watch His fire show up in your life. And you'll pray prayers of faith like Elijah. Later on, Jezebel would say, I'm going to kill you. One woman against a, a man. I'm going to have you killed. He was 850 to 1. You're going to make mistakes in your life. God brought him to a place and took care of him. You know, while all Israel was in a drought, Elijah had water. A raven brought him food. God says, I'm still with you. You just got to know it. One person ain't going to... You just stood before 850 people. You need to recite this in your life. Amen? Amen. So let's pray together. We're going to pray together. Amen? Amen? Let's do that. Pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I know that you are near me. And you are available. At any time. To hear me. No matter the circumstance that I find myself in, I can turn toward you because you always listen and you always respond. When you respond to me, I will step out in faith. Let the zeal of the Lord live big in my life. Hallelujah. Right now, you're here. You may be just getting donuts at the counter. You may be out on the patio. Maybe you just caught a part of this message and it's set a chill down your spine. Or maybe you ignored it, but tomorrow isn't given to any man. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day, and if you will pray with me, you'll see God show up in your life. If you will decide that you're going to give your life over to the Lord today, today is the day that you will begin to experience Him. And you will know that He's very near because He will lift all the weight of sin off your life. All the shame, all the guilt that the devil brought on you. Last night, you failed again. And so the devil says, hey, did things his way. You know what he does after you do things his way? The next morning he brings shame and condemnation. 
He ain't no God to serve. Lay down the drugs. Throw them away today. See if he'll show up. Get rid of the needle. Live for him. Believe that he's real. Because he is. I want to pray with you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior here today. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are the God that is always there. You are the God that was there to die for my sins. To be the ultimate altar of sacrifice. Thank you for dying for me. All my mistakes, all my shame, all my guilt. I will serve you. Because you are there. Because you are there. Be Lord of my life. I will hear you. I will respond. I will take a step of faith today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.